Well, hi, YouTubers. Okay, now I've got a by 100 books and by Katie Hickman, Courtesans. Now, uh, this is an interesting book, obviously, okay, because it's an academic, but it's not too over the top. This is one of the most best researched and well written books about courtesans I've read. Uh, well, actually, I think Kedla. This really kind of explains the depth and the detail of the world of courtesan from, let's say, the 17th century onwards until the present day. And it's very interesting to read about these women. Now, there's um, five that she follows, okay? Now, the introduction itself is 50 pages, and if you can get through that, you can get through anything, okay? Now, of, here we go. Sophia Baddeley, Elizabeth Armistead, Harriet Wilson, Cora Pearl, Catherine Waters. Okay? So, very, very fire, very, very different and diverse women who all were courtesans. Now, it's very interesting how a courtesan ex this is, exists in society, but is on the fringes of society. They are like permanent outsiders. And it's very, very interesting to read about these five women who took control of their lives and their destinies. However, some were led through downfall due to their actions, or because at the end of the day, even though they had, unlike contemporary women of their contemporary society who married well and their lives of respectability, well, or kind of, these women were permanently on the fringes and permanently on the edge as well. If a, if a patron disliked them or wanted done with them, then that's it. They had no power. They had no authority. But however, they did their best to take control, and it is very, very interesting how they did it. Now, a good example is this. This opens quite early one about Sophia Baddeley, okay, of the, uh, here we are. Sophia Baddeley's sure metaphorical life was nothing if not full of drama. An actress who could not act, who in fact avoided the fatigue of the acting life whenever she could. She nonetheless became one of the most famous players of her day, achieving a kind of overwhelming of celebrity which is rare even in her own celebrity-obsessed age. Hers was an erotic beauty which had the power to bewitch both men and women and we exerted that kind of charisma which, unless tempered with unusual reserves of moral strength and level-headedness, can hopefully distort lives and even unhinge the rational mind. Sophie Badley had neither moral strength nor level-headedness. She was vain, spoiled, in impetuous, lazy, spendthrift, only moderately intelligent and only possessed of a great deal of sexual energy. She was also warm-hearted, affectionate, funny, mercenary and generous to a fault. Women who were contradictions are in their own time period. These are, essentially these courtesans were the first celebrities. They were the first it girls. Listening on the fringes kind of gave them sexual freedom to sleep with who they wanted to, but also gave them at the risk of venereal disease. Only one of the women of these five actually became a mother um, due to uh, some what they did back then to kind of ensure that there was no no pregnancies a lot of men no pregnancies for all all time so but there is this kind of like element of strength of these women which is really really interesting as well and there's a bit here this is elizabeth armistead a later courtesan okay regarding her marriage now i love this i love this now this uh Elizabeth Armistead was a time period of in the early in the late eighteenth century. That was that was hers. Okay. Elizabeth sorry, Armistead married, but didn't tell anyone. For seven years. Now I love this. For the next seven years, the marriage of Elizabeth Armistead and Charles James Fox remained a secret even from their family and closest friends. While she was staying at Wharton Rectory, Elizabeth had expressed doubts about the discretion of Perry's clerk, um, Jemiah Bradshaw, who she thought was a gossiping person, but the fears were unfounded. I like the fact that Elizabeth so Armistead kept her marriage a secret because of her position as a courtesan, and I just think she didn't want to be part of that society at the time. Yeah. I know, it's kind of like, by being a part of society and by being a part of the system, if you will, you kind of lost yourself. And it was only seven years after they got married that she entered society and all the friends who turned their back on her, well, James's friends who turned their back on her, warmly embraced her because they had no choice and were charmed. I mean, can you imagine meeting your mother-in-law, okay, and your husband's family? And it's like, yeah, we married seven years ago, we've never told anyone. But she charmed everyone. She really, really charmed everyone. This book is really, really well researched, okay, and got some fantastic illustrations.
that one there is Sophia Baddeley. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. And that one there is Grace. Um, this mentions types on other courtesans, which I really, really wish had been developed. But obviously, this is a to five. Now, one thing I love about um, Katie Hickman is she is very, very honest on what she knows and what she doesn't know. And the thing is, though, as society goes further, further along, and the courtesans become readily more accepted within society, you can kind of see, kind of like also, if the early ones, okay, like um, Sophia Baddeley and Elizabeth Armistead, they are kind of like part of the, as I say, like the revolutionary period. And look, France is mentioned quite a bit here as well. However, like in pre-revolution France and post-revolution France, how the courtesan was accepted. Further along, as we move forward into Victor in um, earlier times, okay, is this one here is Cora Pearl. Now, Cora Pearl, okay, now I'm not sure if you can say this is true or not, but this just reads out of a gothic, a gothic penny, penny novel, if you will, okay? Cora Pearl, um, essentially, she was a good girl who followed a man one day, okay? And... Or, um, after the story. The story is correlated told it as follows. On Sunday she visited her mother, a extremely devout woman who sent her to church with a servant to chaperone her. One day Cora came out of the service to find the girl had gone. I was not used to making my way out alone, she wrote. I found it very amusing and I set out to make my way home. Along the way she was followed by a man of about 40 years of age. He accosted me. Where are you going to, my little girl? To my grandmother's, sir. Does your grandmother live hereabouts? I know, sir. He then said, I sure you like cakes. I blushed a little smile and did not answer. Come with me and I will give you some. Cora followed the gentleman. How kind or pleasant people one meets. Her grandmother will laugh when I tell my story. She had no mistrust, she remembered. I knew nothing of anything, but I was a little astonished and almost as, mu almost as much amused. The man took her to a little house behind Covent Garden Market. On the corner, she remembers seeing a ragged little urchin boy and giving him a penny. It's strange how trivial incidents sometimes impress themselves on our minds. When she woke the next morning, she found herself lying in a strange bed with the un unknown gentleman behind, behind, so beside her. It was one more child ruined, wickedly, beastly, wrote Cora shortly. I never pardoned this, pardoned men, knew this one or the others who were not responsible for this act. The man gave her money, five pounds, on which, she, while she was a get, he was getting dressed, obviously keep her with him, but Cora was too stupefied to answer. Now, authors at the time were sceptical about this, and because it's also likely to be true as well, but the shameful trade in children and young women on the streets, every choice city is well known. In her memoirs, Cora tells the story as if she had been indeed only a little girl of 13, fearful of being taken for a silly girl and as jealous of her dignity, almost a grown girl. Whether, as is probable, she was about 19 when the incident took place is no less believable. The connection between young working young girls working in miniature shops and prostitution was so marked in mid-19th century London as if to be almost a cliché. Okay? And at that moment, Eliza Emma Crouch was dead. Long live Corpel. Take things as a grain of salt, but there's a societal element to everything which cannot be cannot be ignored. But however, further along, you get courtesans like Catherine Waters, one of the last courtesans of the 20th century. Okay. Now there's this line here. It's mentioned as divorce, okay, because the divorce was coming in about the acts of 1857 and 1882. Okay. Even with the late 18th century, women had been bombarded as now with literature, pamphlets, sermons, manuals and homilies about their rightful place in society as they were born to obey men. Belonging in the home and any activity which may lure them away from it was not only inappropriate but might actually de degrade in. There you go. However, so society is changing as far along you get. And courtesans like Catherine Walters, who was a great beauty in her day, it is kind of like this connection between women and freedom, sexuality, because a lot of these women were courtesans, 
because they um, they generally enjoy sex. A lot of them were in it for survival, but a lot of them had had an unnatural downfall. And it's very interesting how the side of places have changed and how women have changed. This bit here as well, because this one here is Harriet Wilson, a Regency courtesan. Okay, I love this world here. Hey, Wilson and his sisters inhabited the nebulous and mentioned world in which is often hinted at and alluded to in the works of Jane Austen, which, but which always slides out of our curious reach, the photographic negative, as if it were, of Longbourn, Mansell Park and Hartfield. In Austen's view, this is the world of unchaste women seduced in disgrace and then hidden away from decent folk for the rest of their lives. It is a world where there is no coming back. Colonel Brandon's young charge allies in sense of sensibility, may present the Havana by Willoughby, to which an hopeless situation, added as a mild tormented by self-approach which she must attend through her life exactly so you can see throughout this entire book spanning this for 100 years how mentality is shifting and I'll, I'll be truly true honest this is one of the last books I've actually read of last year I'm just doing this with you now it was not an easy read but it's a fascinating read about these strong strong women I really really do recommend it it's not just about these courtesans it is about society and changing respectability how the French may say the English may turn their backs on a courtesan but the French may embrace them how societal pressures change the landscape if you will and both of all it's about women who crave um, crave freedom at a time where women didn't have any so Giddy Hitman's courtesans recommending this book it is strong and powerful and it's a very very good book okay sign off here youtubers Mwah. bye now